Hello, welcome to the online lecture of Physics 103. Today, uh, in this uh, video, I'm going to talk about uniform circular motion. First of all, what is circular motion? Circular motion is a motion in a circle, right? So that's the circular motion. Now, when I say uniform circular motion, it means the motion happens in such a way that the speed is constant. Let's say here the speed is three meter per second. Here the speed is also three meter per second. Okay, the speed is constant everywhere. That's called uniform circular motion. Okay, so but I, so here what I'm saying is the speed, right? Keep this in mind: speed, not velocity. Okay, velocity is not constant though because Velocity requires a direction also. At this point, the direction is this way. At this point, direction is this way. At this point, direction this way. So direction is changing. That's why velocity is not constant, but speed is constant. That's why in uniform circular motion, we say speed constant, not the velocity, okay? So now I'm going to um, derive how to find the speed in the uniform circular motion, right? So speed is the speed is let's say speed is denoted by v, and uh, what is speed? I say speed is constant, right? Speed is constant. So what do you get from the three lines of our Bible? Remember, so you have v equals b zero plus a t. Okay, x equals b zero t plus one over two a t squared. B squared equals b zero squared plus two a x. Okay, so if you use this formula here, this one. So what do you get? Uh, a is speed is constant, meaning a is zero, right? Because a is as you know b minus b zero over t constant, meaning this is zero. Okay meaning five minus five constant, right? For instance, so this is zero. So A is zero, it means we are left with this. So what is my B? This B, let me simply call B now, okay? So what is your B then? X divided by T, right? Divide both sides by T gives you V. So B equals X over T. What is the, let's say the total distance traveled by that object is the circumference, right? So, so what is the circumference of the circle? Two pi r. Circumference of the circle is two pi r, where r is the radius of the circle, and pi is a number, as you know, right? So two times three point one four is the value of pi. Then r, whatever value of r goes in here, that's the total distance traveled, right? So big T, okay? Big T is the time it requires to go around the circle, okay? So then time is little t becomes big T and what is the total distance in one rotation? That's what this T is for, right? So the time is big T and the total distance is two pi r. That's what this is, okay? This is how find the speed of uh, an object undergoing constant speed in a circular motion or circular path, right? Now let's do one problem here, a tire balancing, balancing, uh, a tire balancing machine, okay? Uh, uh, the wheel of a car has a radius of this and it is being rotated 830 revolution per minute on a tire balancing machine determine the speed at which the outer edge of the wheel is moving, okay? Suppose this is the wheel, so this is the outer edge, and uh, it has the outer edge has the radius 0 0.29, 0 0.29 meters, right? And this is being rotated 830 revolution per minute, okay? What is the time for one revolution. So in 830 revolution per minute, okay? In one minute, 
So in for 830 revolution, how much time does it take? One minute, right? That's the meaning of this guy here. Okay, per minute means one minute. 830 revolution per minute. So for 830 revolution, you have, it takes one minute. Then what is the time for one revolution? One over 830 minute, okay? It's like if you go to grocery store, right? In $2, you get uh, um, six banana, right? In $1, how many banana do you get? Six over two, which is three. You know, you have to divide this guy by this guy. Similarly, we have to divide this guy by this guy to get for the one revolution, okay? So this is similar to that now. So this is a minute per revolution, right? Revolution, all right. In one revolution, for one revolution, it takes this many minutes. So for one revolution, one revolution, the time taken is one over eight, one over 830 minutes. How do you change it to second, by the way? Because we wanna do in MKS, right? So if you wanna do change it to second, then what do you do? 100, one over 830 minute to second, multiply by 60, right? Um, 0 0.072 second. The time for one revolution is big T, right? Then you can find the velocity like two pi r over big T. Remember from the previous slide, two times 3.14, r is 0 0.29, then t is 0 0.072. So if you multiply uh, this three and divide by that, you get b equals 25 meter per second. Hope it makes sense. Now, uh, let's talk about the acceleration in the case of uniform circular motion. So in the uniform circular motion, the speed is constant, but the velocity is not constant, right? Okay. Uh, if the velocity is not constant, it means it has acceleration, right? Acceleration is B minus B zero over T, or you can say BF minus B zero over TF minus T zero. Since uh, this guy is not constant, meaning this is not zero. It means acceleration is not zero, okay? So if the acceleration is not zero, then what is the acceleration then? Give me the, give me the value, right? If not zero, then what is the value? So acceleration is given by this formula. I'm not going to derive it, but, but just I give it to you, where acceleration is given by speed squared over R, where B is the speed, which is uniform, right? So this is uniform circular motion and speed is constant. So this V is the speed and square the speed divided by radius. So what is the radius of the circle? R, that's how you get the acceleration. By the way, this acceleration is called centripetal acceleration. That's how we have the suffix uh, A sub C, right? It, that means the acceleration is called centripetal acceleration, okay? What is the meaning of centripetal acceleration? It means towards the center of the circle, okay? Meaning the acceleration directs towards the center of the circle. Meaning let's say this guy is moving this way in the circle. Then velocity at this point is pointing to the tangent to this point. You know what tangent is? What is the tangent to a curve? Suppose you have a curve here. How do, you, how do you draw the tangent at this point? Just draw a line touching through just that point. This is not tangent, okay? This is not tangent because it touches two points. Just touch a line, uh, draw a line in such a way that it just passes through one point. This is called tangent, okay? So in this case, um, since this guy is moving this way, my tangent is directed this way, okay? If this happens to rotate this way, my tangent would be directed this way, okay? So 
So velocity is directed towards the tangent and acceleration is directed towards the center. In, at this point, the velocity is directed like this and acceleration is directed like this. So always towards the center, always, always towards center. That's why this is called center seeking or centripetal acceleration, okay? All right, so now if there is um, acceleration, then there must be force also, right? Okay, what is the force then? According to Newton's uh, second law, summation F equals ma, right? In our case, A is C. So since this is M, uh, since this is uh, acceleration, centripetal acceleration, since this is centripetal acceleration, my force is also called centripetal force, okay? So why is it called centripetal force? Because the centripetal force always um, directed towards the center of the circle if the body is moving in a circular path with constant speed, okay? Now, in this case, let's do a problem here. Um, the effect of speed on centripetal force, okay? Let's do that. The model airplane has a mass of this kg and moves at constant speed on a circle that is parallel to the ground, okay? So it is moving parallel to the ground, meaning the circle is horizontal circle, okay? The ground is here, it's moving parallel to the ground, meaning the circle is horizontal. It's not tilted, it's not vertical like this, it's not tilted like this, it's just, you know, parallel to the ground, which is uh, horizontal circle. The path of the airplane and the guideline, this is the guideline, and this is the path of the airplane, which is obviously circular, they lie on the, in the same horizontal plane because the weight of the plane is balanced by the lift generated by the wings. Now you need to find the tension uh, in the 17 meter guideline for a speed of 19 meter per second, okay? In order to happen circular motion, there must be a force directed to the center, okay? That is called centripetal force, okay? Without centripetal force, we cannot imagine a motion which is circular. There must be a force directed to the center. What is that force? That force is tension on the string here, okay? This tension is directed to the center, okay? And that tension happened to be the centripetal force. Remember, without centripetal force, an object cannot move in a circle. It is the tension that provides the centripetal force and uh, hence the object can move in a circular path, okay? Let's figure out the, uh, let's figure out the, let's figure out the centripetal force in this case. So I know tension provides the centripetal force and uh, uh, that's why I can write centripetal force is equal to tension. Centripetal force is equal to tension, meaning tension provides centripetal force, okay? And centripetal force is given by this. That's why tension is equal to that, all right? So and what is M? M is the mass of the airplane, 0 0.9. What is the V? 19 square. What is the radius? It is 17. If you do that, you end up getting 19, okay? So 19 Newton is the tension in the 17 meter guideline for a speed of 19 meter per second, okay? Now let's do this uh, problem here. The effect of radius on the centripetal acceleration. So you know, centripetal acceleration is given by V squared over R, okay? So meaning the acceleration depends on the radius, meaning smaller the radius, bigger the centripetal uh, centripetal acceleration, right? So let's do that. Uh, let's uh, look at this uh, problem here. The bobsled, this is the one, so it's going this way here, this kind of route, uh, con uh, contains turns with radii of 33 meter and 24 meters. This, so while, while this guy moves in this kind of path, so it encounters two circle, okay? One circle is made here, meaning 
if you complete the circle, assuming this is the arc, then this is the circle. If you complete the circle, assuming this arc, and this is the circle, then the radius here is 24 meter and radius here is 33 meter. Now you need to find the acceleration, which is centripetal acceleration at each turn here and here for a speed of 34 meter per second. Speed does not change. So it has constant speed throughout all the way from here to here, okay? Now you express answers as multiple of G equals 9.8 meter per second squared. Okay, all right, let's do that. So we have to find the centripetal acceleration, which is given by this formula, obviously. Now in the first turn where radius is 33 right here, right? This is the first turn, first turn, okay? In the, in the case of first turn, let's find the centripetal acceleration, AC equals B squared over R. What is the velocity? It doesn't change, it's 34 squared because B squared, right? R is 33. So if you divide that, 34 times 34 divided by 33, that's what I meant. It is 35, okay? You get 35. But the thing is you need to figure out, you have to have the acceleration in the multiple of G, look at that express answers as multiple of G, which is 9.8, okay? But this is not, we don't have G here. So how do you get G? G over G, right? That's how you get G, okay? But put the value of G, what is the G? 9.8, right? 9.8 times G, okay? So if you do that, what do you get here? 35 uh, divided by 9.8 is 3.6 G. That's what you get, all right? Now let's do the other second turn. Second turn is you have the same formula again, AC equals B squared over R. So what is the velocity? It's the same velocity again. You have 34 squared. Then what is the radius? 24. Then if you do that, you get 48, okay? but you need, in, you need to find in terms of G, right? So divide G by G, which is one. This, this cancel out, see, you remain, you get 48. So you can do that, but uh, you don't need this G, right? You just need this G. So that's why I plug in the value of this G here. So 48 over 9.8 times G, which is 4.9 G, okay? This is how you do it. Now, this is a conceptual example. Which way will the object go? An object is in uniform circular motion at point A, at point O, it is released from a circular path right here. It's released means it, you let it go, okay? So from its uh, circular path, does the object move along the straight line, uh, straight path between O and A? Does it go this way or does it go this way? So suppose you have, you have a stone, right? You have a rope tied to the stone and you are, you are, you are here, you are rotating this stone. Then at some point O, like here, okay, you release the stone. You, 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 you release the rope from your hand, okay? You let it go. Then where does this stone go? Stone goes this way, okay? So you have a nice picture here, meaning if you, so the uh, stone goes tangent, tangentially, okay? Meaning at this point, draw tangent, okay? So in this uh, direction, OA direction, okay? The, um, the, the object will move along the straight line path between O and A, not the circular one, okay? So not this one, but this one, all right? Now, artificial gravity, at what speed must the surface of space station move so that astronaut experience a push on his feet equal to his weight on the earth? The radius is this. So what is the weight? What is the weight of the astronaut? Weight of the astronaut is given by mg, right? Okay, on the surface of the earth, what is g? 9.8 meter per second, okay? This is on the, earth, on the surface of the earth. 
okay but the thing is now in the in the space station we don't have gravity right we need to create a gravity which is called artificial gravity the space station must go in a circular path so that astronaut experience a push on his feet okay remember if you want if the space station rotate in a circular path there must be a force directed to the center right without the centripetal force this cannot rotate okay there is rotation meaning there must be centripetal force okay what is the what is the force that um provides the centripetal force the force that provides centripetal force is the normal force which uh, acts on the foot right so normal force acts like this okay that normal force provides the centripetal force okay and how much do you want how much centripetal force do you want you want the centripetal force equal to the his weight on the on the earth okay not there on the earth centripetal force is equal to his weight okay that's what we need okay we need the centripetal force equal to his weight so what is the centripetal force centripetal force is mv square over r right then mg okay by the way if you divide both side by m then what do you get m m cancel out here you get b equals b square over r equals g and b e square equals r z right this implies and this implies b equals square root of r g what is your r r is 1700 1700 what is your g g is 9.8 right 9.8 so this must give you 130 meter per second. It means if you want to, if the astronaut want to experience the weight on the space, right? Equal to his actual weight on the earth, okay? In the space, his weight is zero, right? But he wants to experience the same weight as in earth. If he wants to experience the same weight as in Earth, he, the space station has to move in a circular path with speed B equals square root of RG. R is radius of the uh, circle in which the space station move. Then G is the acceleration due to gravity on the surface of the Earth. Okay, so then that gives me 130 meter per second. Okay. With this, I want to conclude this lecture. Thank you.